Hey guys, it's Carl Brown with GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to learn how to play Stand By Me by Oasis. So this is a great song, sort of standard tuning. Um, I'm really kind of focusing on the regular recorded version, the album version, which is done with kind of more distorted guitars than I'm using right now, but uh, I want you to be able to hear the actual chords. And uh, there's a lot of guitar layers. So I'm going to really kind of focus on the chord progression. There's a lot of lead guitar stuff going on. Uh, throughout the song, I'm going to show you what he's doing pretty much every time to get those lead licks instead of actually going note for note through every single lick. So, uh, But he, he's being pretty repetitive with the scale forms he's using. Um, so it would be pretty easy to kind of emulate what he's doing. All right, so um, now there are a lot of guitar overdubs here. None of, not all of which I'm going to cover as well, but kind of the more important ones we will. All right, so let's start here um, with this intro. Uh, with the with the verse here, we're gonna start with just the. Uh... So it's the intro, but it's also the verse of the song. So it starts with a regular G chord. Now the strumming pattern um, is is just an eighth note strumming feel. So if you can get the feel of one. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. And obviously some of those are going to be missed notes. So we'll have. So I'm always still doing the motion, but I'm. The reason I'm saying this is it's not really a consistent strumming pattern that he's using throughout the whole song. It varies quite a bit. So, but it's all just an eighth note feel. So that's all you want to do. Don't really worry about the exact pattern, just the feel. If you keep that feel going, you'll sound great. So we have the G major here. Then he goes to a B7 chord, which he actually um, makes it a B dominant 11 because he lets the top E string ring with it instead of playing that second fret there. E. Let that ring open. So we have the second fret there on the A string, first fret on the D, second fret on the G string, and then the B string and the high E string were allowed to ring open. He's not really focusing, he's kind of on the, you kind of hear it lightly, but he doesn't really hit the high E string loudly at all. But So we have this so far. Then we go to a C major chord, but he adds the G in the bass. So it's a C major in second inversion. So you basically play that with like a C major, move the uh, bottom note there that's on the third fret of the A string, move it over to the third fret of the low E, and then replace that note that you just picked up on the A string with your pinky. Just kind of thickens up the sound of the chord a little bit. And then we go to this transition chord you see a lot in the style of music which is just um, you're still holding the first fret of the B string open G open D and then the second fret there on the A string so we have this and that takes us to a D now definitely when he does the acoustic version of this song he does a lot of Transition between D, just the standard D, and then the D sus four by adding the third thing, uh, the third fret there on the high. E. Not as much of that on the original recording, but you can use it wherever. Really, pretty much whenever a D happens in the song, you'll hear it a lot. Um, what he's doing acoustically, at least. So we have this. All right, now we have some guitar overdubs that come in and orchestral overdubs as well. Um, if you want to do those, it's the slide. It's just kind of sliding from the a, 12th fret of the A string down, then the open A, then the second fret of the A into the first chord of the pre-chorus, which is the C. So let's get the chords down and I'll show you how to add those little kind of fills there if you want to play them. So we have this C, 
I'll play the pre chorus for you. goes back to the verse. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, C major to D. Let's say, what's the matter with you? To the G chord. Then all you do is keep the top two fingers there. Just lower this to the second fret of the low E string. Into the E minor. So it starts to pull kind of a moving bass line. Then we go to an A dominant seventh chord. Now all that is is a regular A major chord, except you have the open G. Instead of playing the uh, second fret there on the G. So let everything else is the same. Open A, second fret on the D, open G, second fret on the B. Back to the C with that G in the bass that we did in the verse. Into the D major. And that builds off, uh, would build you into the chorus the second time around, but first time he just goes back to the verse. So the all together for the pre chorus. So now let's take a look at the chorus. A lot of guitar overdubs going on here. Um, and I'm gonna kind of show you a way of, of you can play it um, like, like kind of a combination of a couple of the overdubs if you want. So we're gonna start here. I'll play the chorus real quick. So I kind of shortened it there, um, just so we don't have, it's the same thing repeated and then there's that little ending on it. Now, what was I talking about with uh, the guitar overdubs? It's two different G's being played there. Um, there's the G that we've been playing so far where you had the third fret there on the B string. That's still in there, but when they do, especially when you do the transition, when you do that little quick little move, which goes from a, to a C to an F, to a D7 in first inversion, the, uh, the F sharp in the bass. And you hear this top note, the first fret on the B, resolve to the open B version of the G chord. So, but you still hear that in there as well. So there's obviously a guitar overdub there, but I think it sounds nice to hear that little, that little, let me show you right this. You hear that resolve. So that's why I think it's nice to maybe start it with a regular G to the D. Do an A minor 7 here. So this is just like an A minor chord, except pick up the um, note that's on the uh, G string. So you have the open G again. Kind of strum that twice as long. And then we're going to do this. We, have, we go to a C, then an F. Now, he can grab the low note with his thumb here. And what, so the note, first fret on the low E string with your thumb, that allows you to leave this finger here, the first fret, first finger here, just run this note. And then the second fret on the G, 
third fret on the D and a third fret on the A. That's the F chord, so we have this. Then move your thumb up one fret to the second fret and then lift up these two fingers. So you have a D, uh, D7 and a sharp foot in the bass. So that's second fret on the low E with your thumb. So the thumb just went, moved up, open A, open D, second fret on the G, first fret on the B. And then resolve that to the G major with the open D string. Or if you like the sound of it, play it with the, the D note there on the second string. So all together. Now when he's on this D as well, he had to open A in there a lot too. So he's kind of like thickening up the chords there. So you go through that like four times, and then when you get to the A minor, A minor seven, just hold it. So now, if you really wanted to do, I'll, I'll, I'll go through some of these fills in a little bit. There's one other part at the end of it, the four minute and eight second mark, you hear this. So that would be, I guess, the bridge, but it happens very quick. So it's at the four minute and eight second mark. And what he's doing, he's always holding the third fret here on the B and the high E string. He starts with an E minor chord under it, which will make it an E minor seven. So it's just, uh, hold these two notes. Very similar to kind of like this, what they did in Wonderwall. Uh, and then, then you're gonna move up to the open D string, second fret on the uh, G, Still got those top two uh, notes. And then to a C add nine chord, which is the third fret of the A, second fret of the D. Open G, and still got those top two notes. So we have this, just those three chords. I believe you go through those chords three times. pre-chorus so that A7, the C with the G in the bass, and the D there with those little, those little fills and stuff over it. All right, so let's talk about some of these fills or what's going on. For a lot of the song, whenever he's doing anything, um, he's just up here. Really messing around with these four notes. Two, four, uh, 12, 14 on the D to 12 and 14 on the G. And he does a lot of bending off the. So it's just a bend at the 14. Again, down to 12. And then he'll have these little. Where he just, this is all just on the G string going down 12, 11, 9, 4. At the end of the song, he goes all the way down. You know, it just kind of just goes down the scale. Um, but so instead of getting really into the um, everything, there is a slight little guitar solo in there, which is also based off the G string. It's just kind of something like that. He's doing a half step bending release at the 11th fret on the G. 
to 9, then 7, 9. But most of the time is. kind of doing all of his fills. I would say 85% of the fills come out of just those four notes. All right, so without getting too into it, just kind of mess around up there and you'll be fine. Uh, that's all he does live, by the way, if you just don't. He just kind of... All right, and uh, now there are some kind of definitive ones um, in the pre-chorus. If you want to do them all, it's like this. Beginning of the pre-chorus, you'll see that obviously a lot more distorted tone than I'm using here. So you're gonna pick the 12th fret like we talked about earlier, then the down slide down to the open A, two, and then into that C chord, and then before you make it up to the D, you're gonna slide five to seven on the A string over to five on the D, hammer five to seven, then back to the. Uh, it could be you know on there too with the off the open strings but he has a slide in it but it's an overdub on the recording and then we have this right before you go into the G that's a hammer uh, pick the open D hammer on the second fret then into the open G into the G chord it's all together and stuff so obviously there's a lot of guitar work going on in here but it's got some great chord progressions in there some very unique chord progressions in there as well at one point at least at the uh, in the chorus um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and you can do your own thing with those uh, lead licks and um, have a blast jamming on it I'll see you again soon for guitar lessons 365.com